welcome to part 5 of the procedural Philotex tutorial by Peerplay. This is the final tutorial of this series and also the last one of 2017. So in the previous part we created skill animations alongside the position learning in a 2D projection. In this part we are going to project it into 3 dimensions. You can already see the result on the video because we're gonna make the classic tunnel spiral visualization. You've probably seen this before either in Winamp, Windows Media Player or during your trip on Mushrooms. The best thing of this part is, it's really easy. If you followed along so far, it will be just a few lines of code to make this work. After that, it's just playing around and being creative. We will leave our previous Philotex script as it is and create a new script that will control our 3D tunnel movement. So let's go to create, C sharp script, and we'll type Philo tunnel. Now in our Philotex trail, we have only calculated the X and Y coordinates, and the Z value is always at zero. To create our tunnel, we'll place this script onto the camera from which we will offset a parent object of the trails in its z-axis and make the camera follow that position. So we need to create a parent object, which we can do by going to game object, create empty, and we'll call this object the 3D tunnel. Now let's first make sure that this is set at zero. The Violet Texas trail will be a child of the tunnel. And we're all set to start scripting our Philo tunnel. Let's open up the script. So the first thing we need in our script is to make a reference towards the tunnel parent object. So let's create a public transform and we'll call this the tunnel. And we'll make the tunnel move faster and slower based on audio again. So we'll make a public audio peer, make a reference towards our audio peer and we'll call this audio peer so we can get the values of our audio uh, let's also make a public float and we'll call this the tunnel speed and we need one more float and we'll call this the camera distance and in this float value we can specify how far the camera will be from the point where the tunnel is being created let's remove the start function we don't need it and inside the update we're going to set the tunnel position so let's say tunnel dot position is going to be a new vector 3 and we only need to change its position into its z-axis so the x and the y can still stay the same so the x and the y value will be tunnel dot position dot x and tunnel dot position dot y. Now just for readability of this tutorial I'm going to go to the next line here but it's still on the same code line and here we're going to specify the z position so again we're going to talk to the tunnel dot position and this time we'll take the z value and we're going to add to this number between brackets and here we'll get the audio pair dot the amplitude Let's just take the amplitude buffer for this example and we'll multiply this by the tunnel speed. Now just add a semicolon here and go to the next line. Now as this script is running onto the camera, we're going to also set the camera position to fall behind the position of the tunnel position. So instead of talking to the tunnel, we're going to talk to this object. So this dot transform dot position is going to be a new vector tree and for its x and y value it will take this dot transform dot position dot x and also take this dot transform dot position dot y and its c value is going to be the z value of tunnel plus the camera distance so let's type in here tunnel dot position dot z plus the camera distance semicolon and that's it for the script, so let's just save it and go back to Unity. And apparently I've made a typo, it says vector could not be found. And this has to be a vector 3, so let's save that, and that should work. 
Now that the script has no errors anymore, we can see all the public variables and we can start setting them. So first of all the tunnel, we've got the 3D tunnel here and drag and drop that into this transform. The audio peer we've got here, so let's drag and drop that here. And now we also have to set the tunnel speed and the camera distance. Now it will be a bit of a trial and error to set the correct uh, amount here, but I will just set this to 20, which means it will uh, move in 20 units at most if it's very loud and if there's no music at all it will be zero and the camera distance will be the distance from the point where the tunnel starts so I will just set this to minus a thousand and we'll just see how we can change that when we play it now I've got here a Fido Texas trail I've set it to 120 degrees which means it will make a triangle and let's see that Now it's already working, you can see that there's a triangle and now it's going in 3D space, which is pretty awesome I think. Um, so we can kind of change this a little bit around, so if I make the distance higher, then you can see that the tunnel becomes longer, and um, or very short, just whatever you want. And of course we can set the speed as well to very low speed like 5 which means that all the different uh, uh, lines will be more together because it has uh, less speed of moving forward um, so let's put it to about 15 um, now we can also go to the trail and we can live uh, change some different variables to see different results in our visualization because we want to make something so now it's set to 120 and I kind of want to have it spin a little bit to the right so I can set it this to 122 oh it's going to the left now so uh, it will make a, a nice spin and uh, it's already looking pretty cool now we can for example set the time to a bit less because we don't need that much time it will just create some geometry and remove it uh, afterwards because if we want to go to the position of the object let me just pause it for a moment and go to the camera position press an F you can see what is happening here the camera is looking down here this is the entire tunnel don't need that much time so we can remove a bit more time five seconds only that's better let's continue working on some cool visualization um, in here we can change also the width of course so let me for example let's go crazy and make this a width of 45 now it's very uh, heavy on its width but we can change the transparency a bit more so let's make it more transparent uh, and we can change the color here as well we can also set this to white and instead of using that color we can use the color in the gradient so if we for example take here a nice gradient so now that we've got that let's change it back to a width of like 5 or 10 and some different degrees for example 60 or 61 or even um, let's change it to 137.5 let's make this big now you can combine a lot of different trails as well oh, see it's not long enough now so um, we gotta increase the time a little bit more make it like 10 it'll be long enough then or 8 I don't know just playing around a little bit we can also do a trail of for example 6 and now it will make these nice little spiral spins now if I would for example pause this and I think this would work if I add another one and make this minus 6 it should go in the opposite direction yep it's just not 
synchronized very well, but uh, it does work. So we've created a few functions for our Philo Texas tool to apply in many different ways to create our own visualizations. As a VJ, it's important to have many different options available to you. So if you are considering to do live visuals with Unity, you should not stop here, but make custom inspectors and a clear interface to change different variables. Uh, I would just want to show you one more little thing. So I've changed it to a degree of six here and we're going to use the scale animation and we're going to set the scale curve to from zero to one and let's scale it from one to 0 0.5. I'll set the scale band to one. So what this will do is when the kick frequency in the audio is present, then the trail will go to the center and otherwise it will go uh, more outwards. So let's see this. So when you combine these things together, you get very different things. Because if we're not using the scale animation, it will just go around. And if we are using it, it will give some little bit of a different feel to it. That's all for this tutorial on Philo Texas. If you would like to get access to the source files of this project, including all the scripts and some cool presets I've created, you can do so by becoming a patron on my Patreon. By doing so, you support me monthly to keep creating these tutorials and as a thanks, you'll get a whole bunch of cool projects. I hope you learned some new stuff in this tutorial and hopefully you are inspired as well. This was the final tutorial of 2017. But I'll be back in 2018 with new tutorial series and many more new and exciting things. For those that are watching this in 2017, stay safe with fireworks and have a happy and creative new year.